Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is September 7th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic sea ice update. Before I, but before I do, I'd just like to let you guys know that there is a major thunderstorm in progress in my area. So if you hear the occasional flash uh, if you hear the occasional rumble of thunder or see a flash of light, it's because there's a thunderstorm out there. We're presently under a flash flood warning for the near Washington, D.C. area. They expect uh, apparently about two inches of rain have already fallen in association with a stationary storm, and they expect another one to three inches here. So, so pretty intense, but... In any case, let's get into this week's Arctic sea ice update. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the measurements for sea ice since the year 2000 and focus in on the present period. And what we see is that sea ice extent for September 6, or as of yesterday, was about eighth lowest on record, tracking near the average line for the 2010s, just just above the average line, and and about 1.4 million square kilometers above the record low for the date set in 2012, as well as about 2.5 million square kilometers below the 1980s average, showing a, a continued trend of loss despite the fact that we are presently near record low levels at this time. It's worth noting that melt tends to end at around September 15th, but can continue on into early to, to mid-October at the latest. Over the past week, we've seen melt rates level off and, and tend to plateau. So this is something that, that we do need to look at going forward. There are certain regions of the, of the Arctic that still appear to be vulnerable to melt. And it's also worth noting that the Arctic overall has been warmer than normal. So the environment is such that that melt can continue although it's not necessarily guaranteed to at this time of year as we are approaching the end of melt season. Now, as far as regions that we're looking at for the potential for continued melt, a region in the East Siberian Sea has continued to thin with, with very thin ice, but this ice has, has hung on through to the end of melt season. So as we get closer to, to the end of melt season, it's less likely that we'll see this, this ice knocked out by wave action or, or warm air or warm water influx. However, it's worth noting that this region of ice is, is very diffuse, very broken, as well as much of the ice on the Russian side of the Arctic in the Kara Sea zone of the Arctic Ocean, as well as in the Siberian side of the Beaufort Sea as well. And looking at the satellite shot, we can zoom in here to see these very dis diffuse and, and scattered ice flows in the satellite shot from yesterday, showing large regions of open water with very few regions of, of densely packed ice. And it's worth noting that the extent measure does include a chunk of this ice, which has been very thinned and winnowed away, so so a bit a bit padded due to the fact that this ice has has spread out. But as you can see, there's a lot of open water in this section of the ice pack. Now we are getting into a period where seasonal fall is really starting to take uh, get into get into full swing in the Arctic. And, and as you can see, the temperatures in the high Arctic near the North Pole in the 80 degree north latitude region and, and above is, is starting to cool off, although the rate of cooling 
now is, is about a week behind traditional climatology for the 1958 to 2002 mean. And due to human-caused climate change and polar amplification, we tend to see this, this kind of lag as, as we get into fall. And in particular, temperatures tend to remain rather warmer than normal during polar winter and during polar night as the greenhouse gas effect ha has a greater impact on, on times when there is less light, on times of darkness. So, so we're, we're starting to get into that and we are seeing what has been a general trend for a, a delay in cooling. And it looks like we're about a week, maybe a week and a half behind the typical cooling trend based on typical climatology, as indicated by the, the green line here versus the red line, which is a, a observed temperatures for this year. Now, some areas of note that, that i just like to discuss for the coming week involve the region of the East Siberian Sea, which is, which is expected to see above normal temperatures, as well as the region near the Kara Sea. And there's one issue that I'd just like to point out for you with regards to the, the trend we've seen as it relates to warmer than normal temperatures in the Arctic. And this zone in the Kara Sea is showing much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, which is helping to generate a bit of the cooling lag that we're already, that, that we're already seeing. As well, we are seeing the Chukchi Sea and the Bering Sea start to heat up in, in an anomaly fashion. So, so temperatures are departing more and more from normal here as, as quite a bit of ocean heat is, is bleeding into the surface and, and bleeding into the atmosphere. It's worth noting that the Bering Sea as well is showing some, some rather high sea surface temperature departures. Now, looking at the next week, the next 10 days, according to model runs, but before we get into the forecast, I'd just like to note that a large and growing region of the Arctic is starting to get below freezing. It's worth noting that it generally takes about a minus 2 degrees Celsius reading for sea surfaces to start to begin to, to cool off to the point where they can freeze. So even in this zone that's, that's below zero degrees Celsius, there's not a lot of, of, of freeze pressure here. But as you get further below freezing, as we see in this zone near Greenland, there, there is some freeze pressure. So, so some of the central ice pack might start to tend to consolidate a bit more as we move through the coming days. I'm gonna go ahead and just advance this model pretty rapidly. We've only got a couple of minutes. And I want you to notice how the region near the East Siberian Sea on the Siberian side of the Arctic maintains a, a above freezing temperature pattern. And during the latter portion of the forecast that we, we tend to get a ridge pattern coming in through the Kara Sea. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance this. And so we can see that much warmer than normal temperatures remain over far eastern Siberia as the ridge pattern begins to shift more into central Siberia toward the latter portion of the model with a big bulge of above freezing air moving all the way to the pole by around September 17th. Now it's worth noting that Arctic temperatures overall remain about one to two degrees Celsius above normal for the region above the 66 degree north latitude line. And ridge zones that are transporting a high degree of heat into the Arctic involve Europe and the East Siberian region. So just an overview of the Arctic environment. It's also worth noting that the wildfire activity in the Arctic has also tamped down as we would expect during recent days although we are still seeing some boreal wildfires in British Columbia and a few wildfires still burning in Siberia, but nothing real intense at this time. So just an overview. Thanks for joining me. I'll be chatting with you soon.